Many of you have probably heard of Llama 2 and the 7 billion, 13 billion and 70 billion parameter versions. But there is a new version out and it's called Tiny Llama. It's just got 1.1 billion parameters, but it's trained on an absurd amount of data. I'm going to share with you the story of Tiny Llama, why it's interesting for the history and future of LLMs. Then I'll run it in a collab notebook you can try out for free and also show you how you can run it on your laptop. In fact, Tiny Llama with just 1 billion parameters is perfectly made for running on laptops because it's so small and you can run it on devices that don't have so much compute power. Here we are in the GitHub repo for Tiny Llama and indeed it is a 1.1 billion model. So much smaller than the smallest Llama 2 model released by Meta recently, which is a 7 billion parameter model. Now to appreciate Llama and Tiny Llama, you have to go all the way back to the original Chinchilla paper, which is not all that far back in time. But it describes how much data you should use to train a model for a given amount of compute. And what was really interesting about Chinchilla is by taking a 70 billion model, so a model with 70 billion parameters, the authors were able to outperform models like Gopher with 280 parameters and GPT-3 with 175 billion while holding the amount of compute, which you can think of the amount of training constant. So with much smaller of a model, they were able to get much better performance and they were able to even outperform much larger models. Now, why was that? The reason is because these larger models weren't being trained for long enough. So it turns out if you have a fixed amount of training you can do, it's better off to train on a larger data set with a smaller model than to train on a larger model with a smaller amount of data. The Chinchilla paper gave rise to the Chinchilla optimal idea, which is a guide for telling you how much data you should train a model of a certain size on, given a certain amount of compute. And roughly there's the rule of 20. So if you have a model with a billion parameters, you train it on 20 billion tokens. If you have a model that has, let's say, 100 billion parameters, then you would train it on uh, 2 trillion tokens. I'm going to skip ahead down this chinchilla paper here to these graphs, which allow you to select a compute budget in floating point operations. And that will tell you the optimal model size you should use. And here it will tell you the optimal amount of training tokens. So if I do that for Tiny Llama, I look at a 1 billion model and compute of 10 to the power of 20. That says I should use about 20 billion tokens for training. So you'd expect if you want to train Tiny Llama to be Chinchilla Optimal to train it with 20 billion tokens. However, Tiny Llama is being trained with way more, in fact, 100 times more tokens than what is Chinchilla Optimal. So why is that? Why would you train it with more than is optimal for a given amount of compute? So let's go back to the Tiny Llama repo. And if we scroll down, we can see some discussion right at the bottom of the Llama paper. I can open up this plot. Uh, this shows the training of the Llama models by Facebook. So on the y-axis, we have the perplexity. As that goes down, it means the model is getting more accurate. And on the x-axis, we have billions of tokens. So you can see that Facebook trained the 713, 34B, and 70B models to uh, 2,000 billion. Now, what you'll notice and Facebook comments on in the paper is that the training loss is still dropping. So even for the 7B model, which has gone well beyond Chinchilla Optimum, because it would be 7 times 20, so that's 140. So Chinchilla Optimum for the 7 billion model would be here. Now, that assumes that you have fixed compute. But if, if you have like infinite compute and can afford to train for longer, um, this is what you get. You, in fact, can continue to improve the model. So even in the 7B case, you're getting an improvement in the model. And this raises the question, well, if you had a 1 billion model, uh, maybe you might see the same thing. So maybe you could just start with a really small model and keep training that and just keep training it longer and longer. And there's actually a little bit more evidence here in the repo. Uh, you can see this plot here from another paper uh, from Pythia uh, with models of even smaller size, so 70, 410, 1.4 billion. And what you see here is the larger models continue to improve. This is accuracy rather than perplexity, so it's improving as you train. Uh, you can see that all of the large models continue to improve, but the smallest models here 
uh, which is the 70 and the 160 million, they actually plateau and even disimprove as you train them on more and more tokens. Now, I haven't read this paper in detail, and it's curious why performance goes down. I would have thought it just plateaus, but it seems like maybe in some cases it plateaus. So the idea with Tiny Llama is what if we absolutely overtrain the model, maybe not over, but train it for a really long time on 3 trillion tokens, which is even more than what Meta used for training their models. And you can follow this training live. It's on weights and biases. Uh, it's not complete yet. In fact, there's only about uh, just coming up to 900 billion tokens of training. This is logarithmic on the x-axis. So the training is about a third done. And you can see the training loss is still going down. And it looks like the validation loss is going down as well. So all of the signs look good uh, for this model at this early stage. Now, if I scroll down here uh, to the comments, there is a comment about training 100 million ultra tiny llama, so 10 times smaller than tiny llama, that has saturated at 200 billion tokens. Um, so if you just scale that up linearly, not that that's a good estimate, if you're training a 1 billion model, maybe it would saturate at, um, I guess, 10 times 200, so 2 trillion tokens. Uh, but of course, we're only at about 1 trillion tokens in the training of tiny llama right now. So still a bit of a way to go, and it'll be interesting to see whether there's any saturation at the 1 trillion mark. Next, I'm going to show you how to run Tiny Llama. It's only in the early stage of training, but still the performance is okay. In fact, it's got a trillion tokens for just a 1 billion Llama, so it's already very overtrained according to the Chinchilla Optimal metric. You can find the model on Hugging Face. There's the raw 1.1 billion uh, model, which is at... Uh, the 250 to 500 checkpoint. Um, and there's also a GGUF version that I've created. Uh, this is a quantized version. And let's see how small it is. It's only 668 megabytes. So this allows for a really compact model that is going to do best uh, on small devices like your laptop. So we'll be loading this GGUF uh, model um, in Jupyter notebook. But first, I'm just going to show you in Collab where I'm going to load with bits and bytes. I'll put a link below. You can select runtime and then just go to run all. And the model should be automatically imported. I'm going to run on a T4 GPU. This is something you can do on a free runtime in Collab. All you need to have is a Google account. And the model should then load it should be pretty quick to load because it's such a small model. Uh, right now, we're just installing some of the packages. Uh, so I'll pause until the model has loaded, and then we can take a look at some inference. And the model is just about to finish loading. And we should have the shards moving to the GPU now. And we load the tokenizer, and then uh, streaming. So the streaming function is set up for uh, Guanaco. The prompt format is a little different than Meta's prompt format style. So I've set that up here. And next we'll just stream, simply list the planets in our solar system. And here we have uh, Lama 1.1b giving us a list of planets. No mention of Pluto, so clearly is aware of Pluto's exclusion as a planet. You can see that uh, it's working quite well. You'll find a link to this collab notebook in the description below. But what I also want to show you is how to run this on a computer, which I think is particularly interesting because it's such a small model. Next up, I want to show you how to run Tiny Llama in Jupyter Lab. I have started up Jupyter Lab. I'll put instructions for that below on how to set up a virtual environment. And I'm going to open up this notebook here that you can purchase below in the description. I'll select run and then run all cells. The first thing the notebook will do is ask me for operating system. Mac with an M1 chip is going to be the fastest, although the small model is definitely the most appropriate. If you're going to be running on Mac or Windows, you might have a chance of getting OK inference. So what's happened here is Llama CPP, which is going to help set us set up a server, has been installed. And once that's cloned, uh, we're going to see the compilation of Lama CPP. So everything seems on track here. 
The install will be according to your operating system. So if you has, have Windows, it'll be a little bit different. And next up here, once Lama CPP is in place, we're going to move to downloading the model. It should automatically be downloaded into the models folder uh, right here. So we have Lama CPP and we can check for uh, files. I'm going to just scroll for the largest files. You can see the models already just been downloaded. It's uh, 553. It's still downloading 636. So that's the size of the uh, quantize for four bit model. I've now been asked for the context length I want to run with. And I have a choice between long and short. Uh, here we go. I'm going to select uh, the shorter length just to optimize for speed. So I'll say A. And now the notebook should run out. And we're here with the tiny llama chat. I'm just going to say hello. And we have Open Assistant saying hello. I'm going to ask Open Assistant to write a code snippet to add two integers, A and B. So I'll send that along. And let's see how that goes. So I'm just going to uh, try and run the code it's provided. And indeed, it's able to run it. So I would say overall, this is fairly impressive, given that training is still ongoing with Jupyter Tiny Llama, or rather with Tiny Llama. The quality, I would say, is not as good as 7B, and you can run into issues if you ask for... Um, if you ask for a question, I'm not sure it'll be able to follow the logic. Um, it's actually not bad here. This still might run. Let's give it a try. And yeah, I guess in this case here, C equals A plus B. I'm not really sure what this code is doing. I guess I can run some of squares, but I didn't ask it for some of squares. So you can see that uh, Llama 1.1 is getting a little bit lost on this request. But still, I think it's an interesting exercise to see whether continuing to train as long as possible allows you to get better performance. And that's it for the demo of Tiny Llama. I don't want to leave you with the impression that a 1B model today is going to perform anywhere close to something like ChatGPT or even Llama 70 or 13 or even 7B. But this is a really interesting project because it pushes forward on training models for much longer. Chinchilla got everyone to train models with more data, and this is extending that by 10 or 20x. That could have implications for improving how even bigger models are trained. Ultimately, I think we're on a path to having language models on our computers and phones, and hopefully this gives you a little sense of why that's going to be possible. Cheers.